Well, we are joined now by Douglas Smith, a managing partner at Kent Strategies. That's a strategic consulting firm where he works on national security and international relations. Thank you for joining us. Absolutely. It's hard to believe it's been one year. I think President Trump on this day would probably be hanging his hat on the economy and how much better he believes it's doing with the stock market, which he takes credit for. Yeah, he does take credit. The interesting thing, if you look at outside measures, not what Donald Trump says. In fact, in Barack Obama's first year, growth in the economy and the stock market was 10% higher than what it is with Donald Trump. So I think that's something he's going to have to pay attention to. You know, the second thing is he talks about employment. You know, the reality is when Barack Obama came in, we were looking at double-digit unemployment. The entire time as president continuing to go down. One of the challenges that uh, Trump's going to have to face are the facts that he threw at Obama questioning how many people are actually looking for employment. So if he wants to measure apples to apples, in fact, this past year, job growth is lower than it was during Obama's first year. So I think if he starts to pay attention to facts, which we know he won't, yeah, the, the argument he's putting out there is going to be very, very challenging. All right, let's look at foreign policy. Whether you would agree with him or not on the Iran nuclear deal, uh, what's going on with North Korea pulling out of the Paris Climate Accord, he's certainly been a lightning rod for controversy regarding foreign policy. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, I spent a tremendous amount of time overseas, and it is an awkward conversation. It's sort of that pink elephant in the room when you walk in, and the first thing people want to talk about is President Trump, but it's also the last thing they want to talk about. Since they've been measuring approval ratings in the presidency in year one, he is the first president since 1945 when they started to end the first year at negative 15. No one else ended in the negatives. He is the first one to end at negative 15. The closest after that is plus five. It kind of shows you where he's stacking up in terms of the world stage and how people are taking him seriously. I think where you started with China is a brilliant point on that. I mean, the Chinese have studied the United States foreign policy system since their history. Trump has tried to learn it on the back of a note card, and clearly he's failing. All right, huge numbers we've seen out in major metropolitan cities going on across the United States uh, right now with these, these women marches. It makes you wonder where Trump's base is. Of course, he lost the elect or won the election by three million uh, less than Hillary. Yes. Yeah, no, I, I think his base is only shrinking. I mean, where he had some numbers where if I was Trump, I'd be very, very nervous about were rural white women. And the reality is I think women have been fleeing from him in handfuls. You know, I think his hardened base at about 26 to 28 percent in the urban areas is probably hanging with him. But the fact that he lost by three million, he's not picked anybody up. And that's a real challenge. I think the biggest challenge for him is going to be the Congress. Here we are, year one anniversary. What has he accomplished? A government shutdown. And I think the leaders in the Republican Party in Congress are looking at this absolutely terrified. Most of the members of our United States House have never known what it's like to be in the minority as Republicans. And I think poor Paul Ryan, who will probably be retiring, I would suspect, is looking at this as just a car crash that he just can't avoid. All right, let's talk about the midterm elections coming up. Will this be a referendum on him? Absolutely. I mean, I think right now he has got a very weak set of accomplishments to run on. And each day as it goes on, as we saw in the, in the special election of Virginia, as we just saw two days ago in Wisconsin, every one of these he keeps losing. The, you know, the numbers in the generic ballot still have Democrats up eight or ten points. It's still a ways out, but this is not going to help him. I mean, he came in saying that he would turn things around, run a, a smooth, easy government, drain the swamp, as he likes to say. And yet he controls all three branches. He can blame Schumer. He can blame Pelosi. He can blame the Democrats all day long. But he controls all three branches of the federal government. And with that, he needs to achieve something on his own. All righty, Douglas Smith with Ken Strategies. Douglas, thank you, as always. We appreciate it.